Hey everyone, welcome back to Save Our Saint. To start off, Season 2 is here and we have spent a ton of money improving the squad. We've also sold quite a few players. Unfortunately, one player I'm going to miss the most. Alright, so the first player to leave the club over the summer was Pierre-Emil Hoiberg. We sold him for around about £25 million. Pounds. Seems like a strange decision, but the guy wanted out. He was causing trouble behind the scenes. So, unfortunately, I had to say goodbye to Hoiberg. I did envision him to be a future captain of this team and uh, one of the players that I was going to build around. But, unfortunately, it wasn't just meant to be. So, Hoiberg left the club for a pretty decent fee. Next up, Yannick Vestergaard, another player that was very disgruntled behind the scenes. He didn't really put in a lot of good performances last year, and I wasn't overly impressed with his defensive work. We sold him with for about six million, six million pounds up front, and potentially rising to nine million. As you can see, that's quite a bit of a loss for the club. But in football manager terms, nine million for centre half like Yannick is is really, really not that bad of a deal. Uh, next up, trying to correct some of my mistakes from last year. Victor Moses is now gone. He uh, sold for about 14 25 up top, um, up front, and uh, one of potentially up to 19 million after uh, fees and all that fun stuff. Next up was Manolo Gabbiadini. Obviously, had a quite a few decent games last year, but not a lot of them, unfortunately. So, we sold him on for 18.75 million, potentially rising up to 26 after uh, fees and things like that. Next up, another Southampton lad here, Jack Stevens. I'd love to keep this guy around, but unfortunately, um, it, he just didn't want to stay and he wasn't going to get a lot of games, unfortunately, behind uh, Delict and uh, Wesley Hoyt at the back. So we sold him to Villa, uh, seven and a half million pounds. Next up, Jordi Classy. Didn't really speak about him at all last season. So he's gone. He's gone to Shakhtar Donetsk for around 4.6. Next up, Giovanni De Santos. He was uh, slightly annoyed by all the transfer moves that I made, demanding to play regular first team football. But as you'll see, he would have fallen down to about fourth or fifth behind the in the pecking order. So he's gone on loan to Nice for the rest of the season. I mean, Giovanni, there are worse places to go than Nice. And this is the guy I talked about that I was going to miss the most. Matthias De Ligt, unfortunately, demanded a move to Barcelona. He caused a lot of problems off um, behind uh, off behind closed doors. Um, during the summer, as soon as he found out Barcelona were interested and they put in a bid, naturally I rejected the first bid. I wanted to try and get away from the Southampton mould of selling our best players on, but unfortunately this was completely beyond my control. So we sold him to Barcelona for £57 million. So essentially we made 100% profit on this kid. I'm going to miss him as well. As we know, he is a wonder kid in the game. As you can see, he is just a fantastic talent. And uh, his influence at the back is certainly going to be sorely, uh, sorely missed. He made a few errors earlier in the season, but he really came into his own in the latter half of the campaign. So Matthias definitely, definitely is going to be missed. Next up was uh, Guido Carigia. We sold him to uh, Derby for 12.25 million, potentially rising up to 19. Um, obviously, he didn't spend any time with us last season. He was Lagana, so he got himself four goals in 19 appearances. And honestly, I don't really envision this striker being any good in the game. Obviously, I could be proven wrong here. Derby, by the way, uh, did get promoted into the Premier Division, so we'll, uh, we'll get to see him at some point. Now, obviously, that was a lot of players going out of the club. Let's talk about the ones coming in, the ones we actually care about. First of all, Jack Grealish, we bought him in for what I think is a bargain price of £14.75 million. This kid is certainly a very talented player. Hopefully, his off-the-field issues are behind him now, and uh, he move forward and progress into a very attacking talent. And uh, as you can see, he's uh, he's already built for the Premier League. Three-star overall rating, four-star potential. I'm excited about the prospect of uh, utilising Jack Grealish. Next up, a potential Hoiberg replacement here, Drew Yearwood, a 19-year-old centre midfielder. We signed him from for South End from South End for four million pounds. Now, didn't have an overly spectacular last year in League One, but quite clearly the talent is there. And if he can grow into his role a bit more, not 100% sure why his ability is going down here, but uh, we'll keep a close eye on his training regimen and make sure that it suits him perfectly. But the kid does have something special. I think I think he's going to be a very useful player for the future. All right, and here is Gestapo Scarpa. Now, a player I don't know about him really. He didn't sign him for, sign him for a pretty reasonable deal too, only ten point seven five million pounds. But he is a very creative and talented attacking centre midfielder. In fact, he's only got one. He's even got one cap for Brazil. Um, as you can see, he fits my uh, formation perfectly to a T. He's an advanced playmaker, plays in the holder, and can even play left back in an emergency. Believe it or not, four star overall rating. I'm very very excited to see what this guy can produce. 
produce and see how many chances that he can create for us uh, playing behind the striker. Next up, Justin Kluivert. I had to replace um, a, a winger from last year. Obviously, we uh, Marino left, so I decided to spend some money and I bought in a wonder kid uh, defined player in Justin Kluivert, as you remember him from Foot Manager 2018. He was one of the more talented wingers in the game. So we bought him in for 19.5 million pounds and I'm very, very excited to get going with this guy. Unfortunately, he hasn't made too many uh, friendly appearances due to an injury, but he is back now, so he should be here uh, available for today's opening game against Wolves in the Premier League. All right, next up, Marius Muller brought him on a free transfer um, on a pretty cheap deal as well to play as a backup goalkeeper. Next up, we bought Felix Eboa Eboa for 3.2 million. He's a very, very able, capable uh, centre-half backup. Obviously, after some of the likes of Jack Stevens, Vestergaard, De Ligt, and uh, Yoshi in January, we had to try and bring in um, just a backup centre-half to help us out. And uh, this guy kind of fits the bill. He's a, obviously a very aggressive, um, powerful centre-back. He's 22 years old as well, so he can still grow a little bit. The potential may go up a bit more. Um, but uh, on the overall, he's just a very very solid nothing spectacular about him and i feel like that's kind of a bargain price for what we paid for him as well next up was a loan deal this time for ruben loftus cheek we all know about this guy's capability and potential he wasn't getting any game time at chelsea so he comes in um, as a backup uh, center attacking midfielder for us to uh, really push gustavo scalper for that first team spot now he's got all the potential in the world to be a very 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 good player he can also play up top at a pinch as well um, strength pace balance uh, dribbling first touch passing technique it's all there he really is um, superb talent and very very much looking forward to getting my hands on this guy and um, seeing what I can produce out of him. All right, next up, a second alone deal. This time to strengthen the center of midfield, Matteo Gadozzi. Gadozzi, I think. Gadozzi, Gadozzi. Uh, Matteo Gadozzi has come in on loan from Arsenal for the rest of the year. This The potential of this kid is unquestionable. He's going to be a wonderful player, I think, in Football Manager 2019. And uh, I feel like he could be a decent rotation option for the season. He also gives us a slightly different look. Um, he's a bit more of a playmaker in there, uh, while Lamina is more of a box to box player. Uh, Romain as a ball winning midfielder. Um, Gadozzi is uh, a bit more of a playmaker. So I'm looking to uh, see if we can maybe implement that in the centre midfield as uh, things move forward. All right, so we actually brought in another centre midfielder here. This one is a long-term replacement for um, um, Oyo Mameo. Uh, Jean-Philippe Gambim. Gam Gabim? Gamim? Gabamin, I don't know, Gabamin, we'll go Gabamin. Um, all right, so he's a board midfielder naturally. As you can see, his physicals are through the roof, his mentals are through the roof. He is the almost the perfect kind of ball winning midfielder um, to partner Mario Alamina. And I see him and Mario Alamina hopefully um, produce a very long-term relationship in that center of midfield. He's just a great talent. He hasn't played for the club yet. Um, he he uh, unfortunately wasn't available. He just signed like maybe a couple of days ago. But as you can see, this, this, this guy is very, very, very talented. And he bought him in for 12.75 million pounds. And I feel like that is a very, very reasonable price. He can also play center half, a right back, and obviously um, as a holder midfielder as well. But the guy is extremely talented. And I'm looking forward to seeing um, what he can produce on the field. All right, so after we saw Matthias De Ligt, I had to try and bring in a replacement start in centre-half, and I went for Harry Maguire. Um, <laughs> not really in the same uh, kind of page there, Matthias De Ligt to Harry Maguire, but still at the same time, Maguire, as we know, is a pretty good defender and football manager. Um, hopefully, he'll get himself a few goals. Um, he's still playing for England regularly on a basis. He's a ball-playing defender too, which is obviously Matthias De Ligt role in the first team. So he comes in, and um, we actually... Didn't pay that much for him. 17.75 million pounds. Really, I don't think it's that bad of a deal um, for someone like Harry Maguire's talent. He's quite clearly Premier League quality um, and he's quite clearly um, a big influence, especially in the box, in both boxes, to be honest with you. So I'm hoping to see him maybe get him a few goals this year. All right, and that's wrapped up the transfers coming in and out of the club for preseason. As you can see, ton of money spent, £101 million spent up front, and then going out of the club, £146 million. So, yep, it's a, <laughs> a lot of change in this team, but there's changes that I felt needed to be made. Disappointingly, we had to lose the Ligt and Hoiberg, but at the end of the day, these players, unfortunately, player power is real, and it really pushes you to try and move them on and to try and keep the uh, happiness and uh, squad dynamics in its place. Um, Pre-season itself actually went pretty good, as you can see. Didn't see the single goal, and we scored a ton of them. 
given that we didn't play a very, very strong opposition. Our best game, though, was probably against Hanover 96. We actually put out a reserve team and we still beat Hanover 1 0. Um, apart from that, it was a pretty straightforward, simple experience during preseason. So, in today's episode, we're going to have two games for you. One's going to be a friendly against a 1980s rock band, Chan Regensburg, and uh, then uh, we'll take on Wolves in the Premier League. Okay, so after all those moves, this is how the squad depth looks for the season thus far. You notice there are a couple of gaps there. Obviously, goalkeeper Marius Miller is certainly a decent backup, so I'm not too worried about him. He's actually two and a half star. And then at right back potentially is uh, one of our weakest backup areas, but we do have plenty of options and uh, potential there with uh, Jan Valley and um, K uh, Freeman. Uh, I can't remember his first name now. Anyway, uh, but Freeman and uh, obviously Harrison Reed can play that role as well. They're all two-star right now, but all can potentially be uh, a bit better than they are. Um, as you can see at centre-half, uh, we also maybe have a little bit um, weak there, but we have a Bobo and Jan Bednarek. Uh, both players are more than comfortable playing um, if one of these guys get injured. Um, mid centre midfield, obviously one of our strongest areas now. Lamina, Romeo, Gdozi, Gambin, Armstrong, and uh, who's the other one? Jack Grealish can all comfortably play as centre midfielders. Um, attacking centre midfielders, Gustavo Scalper, uh, Loftus Cheek, Armstrong, and Grealish. Obviously, comfortable for that role. Ayanusi and Cliver on the right. Grealish, uh, Grealish Gustavo, and uh, Justin Cliver on the left. Of uh, Danny Ings, by the way, his move permanence. Uh, and then Charlie Austin as well there. But Sam Gallagher is also in the works, perhaps be a three star player. So, again, not too flustered by the fact there's only two players there for now. There's still lots of potential to grow in. I want to try and get some young players that go in the team as well, if possible, this season. Um, um, obviously, one of the Southampton things is we like to play youth players every now and then, and uh, I'd like to see the progression of Thomas Harlan and Jan Valerie and Freeman and um, Harrison Reed even um, at a pinch. So, all right, so uh, this is how the first team looks. As you can see, a lot of players in here now. I'm actually slightly worried because Mario Lamina is wanted and he was transfer uh, listed by request. Unfortunately, he came to me and said that he wanted to move to a, a bigger club. So, unfortunately, um, we've got some of the biggest in Europe after him right now. Um, Atletico Madrid, Barcelona, and of course, Milan. Um, he's valued at £27 million. Obviously, I will not be uh, moving him for anything less than fifty to £60 million. Um, and then after that, I can try and reinvest it in the squad. But lucky enough, if he was to go today, at least I have plenty of options in reserve. All right, so... All right, so we just played a uh, preseason game up against uh, 1980s rock band uh, Jan Regensburg. I'm not even sure where they're from. Oh, the second Bundesliga. Of course they are. All right, and uh, Danny Ings um, gave us the uh, victory today afternoon goal from uh, Hamad al Godoy, I guess you pronounce his name. And um, Oslmo can actually got them a goal to make it 2-1 uh, later the end. But it was a dominating performance. I had a chance to try out some of the younger players in this one as well. As you can see, uh, Dean Purby was one of the, uh, the new gen or the regen players that came through the youth system there. Um, Christopher Clark is also a player I'm keeping an eye on at centre half a very promising one as well got a bit of potential about a three and a half star potentially four and a half star um, continued to grow nice and strong actually he's playing pretty well um, in, in the reserves last season and he's coming into the German preseason did a pretty good job uh, Freeman is not one of those players I was telling you about here uh, yeah Kieran Freeman Potential is there, and he could even make a few first-team appearances this year. And he's got himself three assists so far in preseason in just six appearances. So there's no doubt about the kid can actually play. Um, Callum Slattery is a player I wanted to keep a very close eye on as well. Uh, Two-star, potentially a three-and-a-half star, four-star player. Um, he's going to struggle to get a lot of game time with the other players in front of him, so I might have to loan him out for a, another season. All right, and if you guys want to see some of the work I'm doing on the training field, as you can see, the training style, I've pretty much modified them um, to defensive for at least the first half of the month. And uh, starting next month, uh, I haven't done these one quite yet, but I'm doing it like three or four weeks in advance and then kind of going from there. Um, that's I found out it's, it's easy to get into routine of doing that. And the reason I did put it um, defense was because of our very tough opening fixtures. Uh, unfortunately for us, um, we, we play some very, very top teams right from the get-go here. So the first four games, uh, we have Liverpool, Man United, and Chelsea. So it's going to be a pretty rough start to August and the season for us. Um, so that's why this game against Wolves next up is going to be extremely important. Um, after that, it gets a bit easier, and then hopefully we can pick up some points and momentum. But uh, yeah, three of the first four games, Liverpool, Man United and Chelsea. So not exactly ideal. And then, uh, unfortunately, on the injury front, uh, we did actually pick up a little bit of a, a bad blow here. Um, James Ward-Prowse is going to be out for quite some time. 
Fortunately, damage, cruciate uh, ligaments happened, and uh, he's going to be out four to seven months. That's uh, kind of a big blow. He came on strong at the end of last season after not really performing well in the first half of the campaign. Got himself five assists and ten appearances. He was an integral part to our road to recovery uh, when we uh, attempted to save our job. And obviously, as we know as well, transfer deadline is amongst us. Uh, we have, obviously, the transfer deadline closes now before the Premier League season starts. So, um, yeah, we're, we're going to try and uh, do our best to maybe hold off uh, interest from Mario Lamina. Uh, we'll have to see. Let's see what this is. Uh, oh, just Jake Eskiff, wanted by Northampton. That's absolutely fine by me. And obviously the uh, bank's not completely empty. I still have uh, £28 million pounds I'm eligible to spend on somewhere. Now, I already have someone in mind I'm actually discussing with, and hopefully you get to see that deal done today. All right, the first um, the first offer's come in from Mario Lamina, and it doesn't meet anywhere by near my expectations. That is not anywhere, anywhere near enough. And I'm expecting uh, Lamina to come back at me now saying, why did I reject the offer? But um, to be honest with you... I mean, that's that's a pathetically low offer, to be honest. If you admire Lamina, he is worth a lot, lot more than that. Um, oh, my asking price shouldn't be that. That's a kind of a weird bug. I'll report that later on. Anyway, my asking price, it's got to be around like £45 million. Pounds. The guy is that talented of a midfielder. Um, so I'm going to sell him for about, I'm hopefully sell him about £45 million. If he does have to go, I'm going to sell him at least for a decent price. And, um, and this was the surprise I was hoping to, to get you with. Uh, Wilford Ndidi. Um, obviously, this guy is uber, uber talented in football manager games. And if Lamina was to leave, I need a replacement. And I thought Wilford Ndidi would be the a perfect kind of replacement and complement to a Gambim. All right, and the good news is Wilford Ndidi's work permit has gone through after I pushed it through a uh, second time. So we're going to be adding uh, Wilford Ndidi to the uh, first team. I think this is going to be a marvelous, marvelous deal uh, for him. So if you were to lose Lamina today, that's certainly going to soften the blow. Um, so Wolf and Didi joins the team. Uh, obviously, what a great player this is to have on board. I'm very excited to get utilized him. Obviously, maybe as a center half, but primarily, of course, as a center midfielder should um, Lamina decide he doesn't want to stay. So this is a great addition, and I'm very happy to get Wolf and Didi on board. All right, first player to lead the club in uh, the transfer deadline day uh, is Stuart Armstrong. He's going to go on loan um, to uh, Stoke for uh, looks like the end of the season. He can be recorded if necessary, though, but he wasn't really going to get that many games, unfortunately, with all the new signers that we had. All right, so the deadline has passed. We managed to keep hold of Mario Lamina, which means we are well overstocked in central midfield. Um, but then again, I'm happy to get the uh, depth and quality in there with Wolford, Didi, and Gambin, and Godozi, and players like that. So it's going to be a much, much stronger central midfield unit for us this year. But silly me, I actually forgot that the uh, transfer then closes on different days throughout Europe. So we're still going to get a European team in for him at some point. And he's uh, very, very unhappy the fact that I rejected offer from Ajax, by the way. But uh, I'm not quite sure why I'd want to go to Ajax. I feel like we're going to be a pretty good competitive team in the league this year. There's a chance we could even get into Europe. So while well, Ajax have a huge, obviously a huge, uh, rich history, um, I felt like he should wait out for someone like maybe Barcelona or Milan or one of those teams that actually have a chance to win maybe the Champions League this year. Um, all right, so we got some offers here just for loan. Just trying to team trying to fill the, the sides out. Uh, Freeman, Teller, O'Connor. We're going to go spend some time away from the club. Hopefully, they'll improve, come back, and be somewhat useful to the first team. But for right now, all those players aren't going to get a look. All right, I've actually got to say about the, the best news about preseason. Um, Les Reed is now gone, and we've placed him with uh, Stuart Weber. Um, Stuart Weber is the director of football of uh, Norwich City and previously of Huddersfield as well. He was chief scout for Wolves and QPR. Um, but I'm just glad to see the back of uh, Les, Les Reed, be honest with you. All right, another player that was kind of disgruntled, didn't get a look in the first team during preseason was Josh Sims. Obviously, with all the transfers that came into, he was going to have to be, um, I don't know, I, I guess he was going to have to be put to the reserves and he wasn't going to get much game time. So I don't mind him going to a championship club on loan. Uh, Barnsley and uh, Don Casarovas are interested. So I'm happy to send him to even one of those to continue his development. And bad news, uh, Justin Clivert's now got fractured ribs. He's going to be out three to four weeks. Unfortunately, we'll send him to, um, he's a club doctor. Again, it's not an injury that's going to be recurring. Um, so we'll send him to the doctor. He's going to be out for about three weeks. So it is a point we're not going to get to see him in today's episode. But there you have it. Not much we can do about it. All right, so Harrison Reed, he wants out of the team as well. Um, this time he can go on loan, though, to uh, Montpellier. 
that would be a bad move for him at all getting some some uh, first team top 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 flight football experience that's always beneficial all right from a tactical point of view i didn't get to actually speak about um so basically uh we're going to line up the same way uh four two three one formation um uh, our second area formation will be another four two three one of a different tactical approach though i'm going to use the ggm press when we need to really start pushing the opposition let's say we're one nil down that kind of scenario so i'm i'm going for something like this uh and then the uh third option is a bit more of a defensive option uh where we move our attack and center midfielder to uh just kind of a half back as you can see to play in front of the back four to help protect the lead um, so at least we have a couple of options to keep things interesting this year all very similar in style and shape um, the only one difference perhaps being the G Gem press uh, the boys are still getting familiar with that one as you can see all right so if we look at the uh, season preview for the campaign you'll notice uh, that we are currently predicted to finish a ninth place in the table um, Everton um, are nine to one to win the league that's extremely surprising um and just about just blow chelsea at five to one um yeah that's actually very very surprising uh, I, I actually can't believe that happened um the key players uh from the premier league court into the the key players are going to be uh gustavo scarpa and mario lamina i would agree with that to be honest with you so uh coming in to the league uh frank lampard by the way is taking over as manager at crystal palace that's an interesting development there um daniel stendel is now manager of derby taking his spot uh jurgen klopp has taken over at tottenham that is a very very interesting um um situation that happened there Jurgen Klopp takes over as manager of Tottenham um Harry Kane by the way is still at Tottenham so it'd be interesting to see what Jurgen Klopp can get out of him probably lots of goals without knowing Harry Kane it's probably gonna be lots of goals but anyway here we go uh first game of the season I'm uber excited to get the season going I'm very very excited by the prospects of all these new players coming in I think we're gonna have a really good campaign I think we're gonna surprise quite a few teams and I think we're gonna sneak into European contention this year so without further ado let's get this season going um there are a few players unfortunately not available to play in today's game obviously uh, Ryan Bertram one of those players Cliver and Gambin is not quite fit so indeed they go straight into the team as a board and field of the partner Lamina um, inside forward instead of Justin Clive today it will be Alian Nussi and then uh, on the bench we're just going to put uh, Maxwell Corne on the bench does everyone else look fit everyone looks good and ready to go so here we go starts off the campaign Angus Guns in goal uh, Jeremy Tolgen at right wing back with uh, Wesley Hood and uh, Howie Maguire making his debut at centre half Matt Target at left back Lamina and Didi through the middle El Nursi, Gustavo Scarpa Jack Grealish and Danny Ings make up the attacking options so here we go into today's game up against Wolves looking to get a victory to start things right all right so here we go up against wolves away from home at molyneux um it wasn't a happy place for us last year from what i can remember but i'm hoping to change that today so here we go start off season two as manager of southampton we've made it this far let's see how far we can go Hey, first highlight of the season and looks like it's going to fall to us here's Danny Ings on the counter attack now obviously they've got many players in support there he's going by himself and we'll just get back in numbers he lays it back to Jack Grealish at the edge of the area Jack Grealish though oh almost a goal on his debut there from Jack Grealish I'm very excited to the prospect of him actually doesn't look that good according to my assistant manager but I think he's going to have a lot he's going to be a ton of a ton of potential and there's Leo Donka and he's oh Insu has made it 1-0 here early on for Wolves shit all right so up against it straight away cool and again um i don't want to i want to stress the importance of this game today we need to get off to a good start especially the way that this season was going to start with that those uh first three games chelsea arsenal and manchester united and liverpool and manchester united we need to get something out of this game so all right all right all right and i'm i'm aware it's going to take time for these guys to gel obviously familiarity uh, with each other relationships things that need to form need to need to need to bond but uh we need to get something out of this game today all right half time here and we are one nil down we're actually playing pretty good though uh plenty of shots on goal um decent possession as well but we can be doing much much better in the second half we're going to send these guys out motivated hopefully hopefully to turn this around for us all right first out of the second half here Maguire's going to lead from the back to uh, Wolford and Didi to Gustavo Scarpa. A lot of new names today I'm going to have to get used to. Oh, Lamina, that's a terrible pass then. Here's Diego Jota now. Lucky enough, his shot was equally as bad. All right, Grealish from the corner kick. He whips a ball in. Oh, Maguire, I think he is fouled in the box and is a penalty. Danny Ings is going to step up and take this. Come on, Danny. First goal of the season. So Danny Ings in front of the Wolves fans steps up and smashes it goddamn wide of the post Danny Ings 
Oh, Danny, Danny Yings. All right, you're coming off now. All right, I'm not going to have that. All right, so Ruben Loftus-Cheek. Yeah, let's bring him on. Uh, we got Sam Gallagher on the bench as well. But let's bring on Ruben Loftus-Cheek to play up top. Um, mid change, in, change in attack in midfield, perhaps. Elianusi for Corne. Yeah, Elianusi for Corne. All right, so here we go. 66 minutes, still 1-0 down. Should be 1-1. All right, 10 minutes of the go here, and we are running out of time to get something out of this game. I've gone to very attacking and obviously giving these guys a shout from the uh, touchline. But so far, Wolves are holding us at bay. Here's Helder Costa now, and he puts his uh, shots well wide of the post. So with time running out here, it looks increasingly like it's going to start a very, very bad way. Here's Grealish, though, puts the ball in, and uh, Patricio makes a comfortable claim. So we still have time here, boys. We still have time. So far, it's been a disappointing, very, very disappointing way to start this season. The Otto, come on, get stuck in, for Christ's sake. There's no way with our midfield this year to pass it around us that badly, and Helder Costa makes it 2-0 and, and kills the game. All right, so we're going to open the season with a defeat. Great, after all that you know, money and effort of the Premier season, doesn't look like it's paid dividends. But as I mentioned at the beginning of this game, I knew it would take time for these guys to gel, and... I'm going to be optimistic and put it down to that, but uh, on uh, first impression, this is not a good sign. We're not creating anywhere near as many chances as I thought we would with the likes of Scalper and Jack Grealish. All right. So a 2-0 defeat here on the opening day. It's a pretty bad way to start. It wasn't actually a too, much, too bad of a performance per se, but um, not exactly what I wanted. All right, so disappointing, 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 disappointing. So, um, yep, thanks so much for watching the video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed um, this video. Uh, I hope you guys are looking forward to Season 2 of Save Our Saints, obviously. Uh, my expectations are to get into to Europe somehow, some way this year. That will be the natural progression for the football club. We spent a lot of money, retooled the squad, and hopefully once we're fully gelled, we're going to see much better displays than the one we just had against the Wolves. But uh, thanks so much for watching watching the video hope you guys are enjoying the series so far if you are please leave a like on the video itself and if you want to see more from me in the future and daily foot manager content please hit subscribe turn notifications on i would truly truly mean a lot to me but um next episode what we'll do is we may just go ahead and uh, skip to the end of the month now we'll play um the league cup game and we'll play chelsea or something and then uh, that'll wrap up and then we'll be international break so yeah we'll do the uh, league cup game and then chelsea there'll be a few more episodes this season obviously because now we're fully integrated into the game and uh, we're fully uh changed tooled and changed the squad so there'll be a lot more episodes um to for you guys to enjoy but um thanks so much for watching hope you guys enjoyed it and i'll see you all in the next part goodbye everyone goodbye